Hi everyone, in today's video I wanted to show you how I used Luminar AI to enhance this astrophotography photo to create this final product. Now I know there's a lot of give and take when we're talking about artificial intelligence, but Luminar AI is a photo editor that is completely AI based. Basically what I'll show you is it uses some sliders and stuff to create the photos. So let's jump into it. So here we have a photo of the Trifid and Lagoon nebulas that I took last summer. Now, what you'll notice here is that immediately Luminar AI, once this photo was loaded in, has given some recommendations, artistic, natural skies, easy landscapes, and it'll also give you a marketplace recommendation where you can buy additional templates for a small purchase price. Now, if you're not interested in the recommendations at the top, you can scroll down and see that they have all the different ones that come included with the software. Obviously portraits is not ideal. Macro, this is not a macro image, so it's not gonna recommend those. Cinematic, not so much. Lifestyle, you could theoretically do if you want to. And then you have some aerial ones, and this is sort of what it's picked for astrophotography. So if we were to pick one of these, you can sort of see that it will do various things very quickly to the image, depending on what you want that image to look like. Definitely not this one. <laughs> We're trying to not have things squiggles on our pictures. But if we go back up to the top and we look at the ones that are recommended, I'm going to go with easy landscape and we can sort of start playing with some different images. And you can see here where it's really pulling out some of that background color and the stars and nebulosity. So I'm gonna go here and choose long exposure as my starting location for this picture. I'm also then gonna go up here and go to the edit to make a few little changes. So the first thing I'm gonna mention is that you have two main sliders. This one here that does the accents, you can see here, adding in a lot of that background color, but you also have down here, the overall effect on your original photo. So if you only want a little bit, you can have that slider only about halfway, or you can run it the full way. Another consideration that you have is that you can add a mask to the image on several of the AI tools. So for this example, I'm gonna take the remove mask and make a deselection of my primary nebulosity because they're already pretty good. And what I really am trying to do is by making this picture pop is focus on the non hydrogen alpha sections of the image. And I can make some little changes here, radius, opacity down here, and then go through here and make a very careful selection knowing where I want that effect to happen or not occur up here and run a little more here. Okay, so that way I now have it where if I move this slider here, the original nebulosity isn't affected. So I'm gonna avoid any sort of oversaturation of the nebulosity, which is already quite red. And I'm gonna pick this as the example. Same thing can be done with composition. Um, it's going to make an estimate on what I can do with that image. I have it set here because I wanna focus on these two nebulosities here and this dark region here, and then have it there. So I'm going to rotate it a little bit, maybe bring it in, keeping what I want at the dark nebulosity, but keeping it there. So that's pretty good. Now, this has it where you can do a whole bunch of other cool things like flip, rotate, etc. But for what we're trying to do here, we're not trying to misrepresent the image by giving it in a weird orientation. We're just trying to remove most of this other nebulosity, which in this area we don't really need. It just ends up being a lot of overpowering yellow. So we've done that. There's also the erase tool where we can go and erase sections of the image. Light allows us to adjust for the lighting so we can adjust the image this way or that way. Now, one thing I will note is that unless there's an option to mask, this will affect the entire image. So you have to be wary of that when you're making little changes on if it's a change to the whole thing that you're making or just a little bit. And we're just going to push it. And we're just gonna push it ever so slightly here. Um, we can also 
obviously change the exposure values. Um, we can use its smart contrast and we can play with the highlights, drawing them down a little bit um, to get more detail and in the shadows, bring them up or down. And we can sort of go like this. And again, with a lot of what we're trying to do, it's very subjective to the viewer. So while I might be doing this and I think that this looks like a better picture than the original, you may be in a disagreement. As you can see here, this is what we've so far ended up doing. Um, there are blacks and whites. There are curve adjustments if you want to get into that. But again, these are a lot of tools that you start getting very specific on, whereas what I'd really like to focus on is the AI tools. Again, structure, we can play a little bit with this. I think that overall this is going to cause the stars to go a little crazy. And if we draw it down, we end up with a much more blurred out picture. And obviously if we boost it, we can make this look very artistically flared, but not really accurate. Um, and again, we have the mask tool if we want. It is an AI tool, but we're not going to do much with that. Similar with color, we're pretty happy with the color. I'm not going to turn it to black and white. Um, obviously we can do that. It's going to do this. It looks pretty cool. And you can play with different values to make them darker or brighter as you so see fit, if that's something you want to do. And again, you can add a mask like so. And then that would only make that black and white. Overall, I'm not particularly interested in, in doing that so we can stick out of it, but it is an option for those who want to get that cool, dramatic HDR black and white look. Um, details. Now, this is gets a little interesting. Now for this, I'm going to drop the small details down. Medium details, I'll bump up a little bit. And larger details, uh, probably go like that. Um, and this just gives me a little bit better star control. We do have sharpening in here if we want it, but I think that overall in this type of image, we go back, we can see that probably doesn't really need it because we've already done a lot of star sharpening. And again, sharpening is generally based on edge detection and stuff. When we're talking about a lot of point light sources, we don't necessarily want that always to happen. Similar with denoise, you can add denoise. You can, you know, ramp it all the way up. I overall don't think you're going to see a huge difference in the actual noise structure uh, versus a loss of uh, detail. And I should mention up here, when it's processing, this is going to make a little purple color. Now I have a very fast computer, so you'll only see it blink. But if you have a slow computer, you can expect to see this go three or four times as it's sort of doing that. Similarly with landscape, we can sort of dehaze. It's going to do that. But these tools are not designed for astrophotography. So generally I would say you probably want to skip those things. Similar when we come down to create up sky, augmented sky, atmosphere, um, like sun rays, like seriously, you could do this if you had a little bright star in your image and you could have a crazy sun ray out of it. I don't know why you would do it, but if you want to get that artistic flair in there, it's definitely an option. It does work quite well in regular daytime photography if you want to add a sun ray in there. And there's a bunch of settings for this sun, including radius, glow, uh, how many sun rays you want, and the warmth of the sun. Other tools, however, are a little bit more useful, like the dramatic tool. You can really make it go an interesting. You can drop that local contrast. It's not bad to add a little bit of it just to give a bit of a pop back in. Um, and similarly in moods, you can definitely play around with this. And am I going to get to go? And these will adjust the colors based on what kind of mood you want. Um, I don't really know what all the different names really refer to, but essentially you're just changing the color palette with essentially a lookup table. And you can end up with some pretty neat effects. So in here, I'm going to go with uh, Chroma Chrome 3. You can definitely push it up, but we just want a little bit of that pushed in. Again, for looks, we're good for that. We do have toning. Um, we can definitely tone the amount in the shadows and the highlights, and that's gonna add sort of your color tone, what color you're gonna have with the dark. So for shadows, for example, I want a little thing, I'm gonna pick blue. And that will allow me to put a little bit of blue into the background colors. Similarly, in the highlights, I'm going to go and pick a little bit of saturation and I'm going to pick a yellow curve and I'm going to do that and give myself a little bit of yellow in the highlights. 
Now, I could also pick blue in the highlights, but that's not really a good combination. Generally, when you're color toning, you want to pick two separate colors to get that differentiation between the highlights and the lowlights. You can add matting, but I find that generally it reduces your contrast by quite a bit. Generally, I would say for astrophotography, this is the opposite of what we've spent hours and hours and hours trying to reduce. <laughs> Similarly, mystical can give us a bit of an interesting effect. Um, it can work pretty well. I would just, again, use this tool here if you are blowing out your highlights a little too much. And in this case, I want to pull them back just a little bit. So I will, using a very, very weak opacity brush, just do that so that it's not as overpowering powering as before. We do have glow, glow again for astrophotography, totally useless. Same thing with film grain. We can add film grain in, but it's not really doing anything to our photos. Um, portrait, we can completely skip for astrophotography. It is 100% not gonna be used. And we get down to our professional level. Now for the professional level, we can hit the fringe. If you do have fringing in your photography, for mine, it doesn't, it's not gonna do anything. Um, you could do devignetting, which will try to devignette the image and you can, do a whole pile of stuff here, but it's all it's gonna do is basically try to darken around the corners. Overall, it's not a huge effect unless it actually the AI sees that there is vignetting. Super contrast is a fun one to play around with, which basically allows you to reduce or increase the contrast of various levels of imagery. So if you put it up too high or too low, it's going to do something. We want a little bit of contrast, but we're going to change that point so we can get a little bit more detail in here. In the mid-tone contrast, we'll bump that up a bit. And we're going to just adjust the balance ever so slightly. There we go. And similarly, shadow contrast, we can bump that up or down. And we can adjust the balance to where we want to see it which I think is probably going to be, ooh, not that. Definitely not that. Um, so we might pull that one back down. So that's where we can get to that. And again, we can use this tool here, and I'm just going to move some of the effect on the nebulosity again, because when we started off, we were pretty happy with it. And if you're ever wanting to, you can press this button here. It'll take you to what we originally had. Or you can use this tool here, or you can use this tool here, and do sort of a slide thing. And you can decide if that's better or worse um, as you go through, but it gives you an idea of what we're able to do. Color harmony, similar, is allowing similar brilliance, but this one here tends to be a little bit difficult to use in astrophotography, simply because it's gonna affect the whole picture. You can, of course, add a mask around the image, um, depending on what color sp space you want to be in. But for me, I was pretty happy with that original sort of orangish glow. And again, we can have a mount. We can add it there. There we go. And as always, we can sit here and with our tool, subtract the actual nebulosity and then go back and just fill in a little bit around the edges. There we go. And you can sort of do that way. Finally, we have dodge and burn. If you're not aware of dodge and burn is, that's lightning, that's darkening. You hit there and we just go back to the regular because it's not something you're really going to use in astrophotography, but it's there if you need it. And clone is a fun one. If you're like, you know what I want? I want more. Oh, can I just do the one? I apparently do the one. Okay, another Trivet Nebula for some strange reason. You never really do it, but it's there if you want it. <laughs> and again, at the end of this imagery, we can sort of pare back the effects a little bit to get where we're kind of happy between the original, which was here, and what we ended up with. And this might be pushing it a little too much now, but we'll pull it back a bit and we'll say, okay, I'm happy with this. We'll go to export. We have a couple of different export options, but I'm just going to save the disk. I'm going to choose a PNG file. 
I'm going to not do any additional sharpening. I want the actual size and then I'll hit export and it'll export that file onto my computer for which I can then do as many great things with it. And that brings me to sort of what I want to say about this AI program and a lot of other AI programs out there. You can actually end up doing all of this in Photoshop, in Affinity Photo, in Pixinsight, and you might even be able to do it better than what this AI program can do, but you need to understand how all these different steps work together and doing various variations where these AI tools basically allow you to do this with no more than just moving a slider back and forth. And with a little bit of play here or there, you can find out what works for each of your photos and what doesn't work for each of your photos. And while I will admit that for astrophotography, this might be a little bit crazy to go to this extreme, I do want to explain to you that for astrophotographers, you might be cringing right now, but for the general public, I did actually do a test of this image compared to the original. And in fact, I did several images through Luminar AI to see how my punchier, colorful images that I couldn't really do in Photoshop without the data absolutely going crunch. And they performed extremely well, even having some people comment that it's some of the best astrophotography they have ever seen. Okay, so that is Luminar AI. I hope you enjoyed my little walkthrough from an astrophotography standpoint. I am going to try this photo program out on more normal images of portraits and landscapes, and we'll include those videos later date. But overall, we can see here that this is actually a very powerful tool for photo processing of your astro images. Yes, it is going to allow beginners, and I'm gonna call myself a beginner, um, compared to some of the really advanced users, to allow me to pull things out of my images that I wouldn't necessarily be able to do in programs like Photoshop or Pixinsight without adding a lot more steps to the process and having to understand, particularly in Pixinsight, how to do those in each of those steps. It's similar to like when I use StarNet to create a star mask when I'm doing my initial processing of photos. You can do star masks the other way, it's just StarNet++ does it with one click. Is it as good as some of the other options? No, but it gets the job done and it gets the job done quickly. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. I'm happy to come out and answer them. And if there's something else that you want me to see me do in this channel, let me know as well, because I make these videos to help other people. And as always, if you are considering buying Luminar AI and you want to support this channel, there is an affiliate link below. I do appreciate if you use it, but if not, thank you for watching anyway, and I hope to see you in a later video soon. Bye.